If we are going to talk about how the system is failing students and black kids, we cannot be using black kids in content to prove that point. Let's talk about it. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. on you all I want to talk about this teacher and I'm not going to say his name but there was a teacher who has went viral on TikTok a couple of times and honestly the last couple of months when he first went viral many of us got online and said hey how he's talking to these these students how he's engaging in his classroom something is not right something I ain't feeling a lot of us was like I, I don't know about it and folks you know called it out and a lot of folks responded said no nah, he's telling the truth and y'all don't like it he's calling out these kids can't read they behind the pandemic and stuff they need to be in the classroom that da, da, da. folks was sounding off they be on the phones they be on the ipods y'all was going off now the second video has went viral and again what is he doing berating and talking down to the students in the classroom the kids' faces are not shown, but he has his phone in front of him while he's teaching a lesson and talking about shapes I'm seeing some of y'all online saying, oh, he wasn't that mean, he wasn't that that whatever, and some of y'all are even doing the exact same thing that y'all call out when folks talk about, well, my mom and dad beat me and I turned out good. Y'all are doing the same thing right here. What black teachers have been doing it, my teacher used to talk to me, it's tough love. Y'all do not want black kids to be kids. Y'all get online and y'all talk about kids, you know, black kids, their joy and stuff being taken from them, the world is whatever. Then y'all get online and y'all see that this teacher is recording content, talking down to these kids in this classroom. Y'all are treating this like this is a Freedom Writers movie, like this is um, a Freedom Writers part two, the Black Gate Teacher Edition. And I have so many questions because it's like, are we protecting the kids or are we not protecting the kids? And not anyone has told or explained to me or anyone online why the need for the camera to be in the classroom and the TikToks need to be made while these kids are sitting in the classroom. And y'all will say, oh, well, the kids' faces are not being shown, da, da, da. He would not be able to put them kids' faces like that in there, period. So I don't know why we bring it up. Those kids know that that TikTok is being posted. They are in that classroom and they are aware, these 12, 13 year old kids who are growing up with phones and access to the internet since they have been born, know how these things work. They know these things are going on. And no one can explain to me how is this helping the kids with him talking about their reading level or not being able to understand shapes. Nobody's explaining to me why the camera needs to be recorded in the classroom. Nobody's explaining that to me. And I'm going to tell y'all what exactly it is. The main reason why this person is doing this is because they're a cloud chaser. Point blank period. And I've been called out. I went through his LinkedIn. I went through his social media. First of all, he's a Nicki Minaj stan and is a apologist or our apologist there is literally a tweet that is still probably up right now where he's defending kenneth petty and agreeing with Nicki minaj when she was lying and saying that that situation happened and it was a white girl come to find out it wasn't a white girl i ain't breaking that down we've already done videos about that him being a barb was already a red flag him being a known barb a teacher who is a barb something about that is just not clicking like it just did not click and he is not someone who gave me that he was excited about teaching and wanted to teach. He did not give me that. He did not give me that he is ready to, you know, help kids and educate them and all that other stuff. He gave me, and unfortunately this is the system, someone who said, hey, you know what? I can get this job. I can make this money. Um, I'm really not excited about it, but this is a job and I can do some stuff, da, 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 da. And now... He is building an audience off of talking down to these kids and, and, and speaking to them. He's building an audience and a platform. This is also somebody who does music on the side and somebody who does modeling. Now, folks will say, oh, what's wrong with him having a side gig and all that other stuff? Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that. But it shows me, while going through his stuff, 
that there is no passion in teaching. There is no energy in this. He is someone who is thirsty to be seen, which is why he can't understand why he doesn't need to have this camera out recording these interactions in that type of atmosphere with these kids. He cannot understand that. And his response is now, because now he's offered an apology, quote unquote apology, everything about this person gives me somebody who wants attention. Everything about this person gives me somebody who wants to be seen. And that's dangerous. As a fellow content creator, I'm going to be honest, and folks probably already know this, but when you are a content creator or whatever and you have a video that gets views or it, like it's popping, more than likely you're going to want to recreate that content. More than likely. Either you're going to recreate it or you're going to be excited to do it again. That's why we continuously see these style of videos. We're not seeing no informative videos of, hey, this is how I'm teaching my kids. This is how I'm getting this. Those are not getting viral. Those are not getting, for whatever reason, he ain't, put, he ain't focusing too much on that. He's not building any type of community with this platform saying, hey, you know, are there any tutors in the area? Like, how do you teach kids this stuff? How do y'all get over this? What lesson plan? Are I'm not seeing any content of that type of magnitude. I'm not seeing any of that being created because there is no reward for it. There is no instant gratification and reward for it it. What is getting him attention is that because some of y'all and a lot of y'all don't like kids and you damn sure don't like black kids. We see it all the time. So it doesn't surprise me that he is getting some type of level of support because some of you all when that DC carjackings and stuff was happening was so happy and was coming up with scenarios of what y'all would do if a 14, 15 year old tried to steal your car. Y'all were so happy to talk about taking a child's life. Y'all were just so happy. Y'all do not like kids and y'all specifically do not like black kids. Y'all don't. And you have this person creating this content and it makes some of y'all feel good that he's talking to these kids like this and he's being honest. Some of y'all like the fact that he's saying that these kids can't read. Some of y'all love this. Some of y'all are enjoying this type of content. And there is no type of solution with these TikToks, with these videos, there is no solution. And I'm watching people now say, oh, well, y'all are being like extra about it. Y'all want him fired because he's gay and he's this. I can give you that some folks are definitely engaging in, you know, you know, homophobia and all that other stuff to describe him, to talk about him, even anti-blackness, all of those things. But I'm gonna tell you what, if that had been a fat, black, dark-skinned woman or a fat, dark-skinned, undesirable queer person talking to kids like that, y'all would have had them delete their social media. I've seen it before. Your folks are capable of harm. Him being gay and all the other stuff, he still can be harmful. I can't name any female teacher that is making content like that and is going viral. Y'all wouldn't allow it. Because even if he is a gay man, he's a man at the end of the day. And even if he is feminine, he's still thin, which helps him in being desirable, which shields him from criticism. Because had that been a fat, queer, femme person, y'all would have been coming up all type of scenarios and, and saying how, oh, they're miserable, all the other stuff. Why do y'all not see, this is, to me, this is miserable. I couldn't imagine going and teaching classroom and recording me talking to these kids and talking down to them like that. I, I, I can't imagine continuously making content like that. And if I had to make content addressing the system, because even in his apology, he came out and said, Oh, y'all talking about the system. Y'all want to talk about the system and da-da-da-da. He never once explains the system. You all want him to be a martyr. Y'all want him to be some Black Lives Matter situation. It's not giving that. That man, the way he talked about those kids, the way he talked about those parents in that first video, gave me anti-blackness from the very, very beginning. The way he described and talked about the parents and how the parents do not be involved in the kids' lives. He didn't go and say, hey, the parents are not involved in these kids' learnings and, and teachings and studies and stuff because the parents are overworked and underpaid and they don't have the time to be there for their kids because of capitalism, because of exploitation. He never explains any of that. So why are we letting him build a platform to teach us about stuff when he's not even 
having the range to acknowledge it. The only thing that he's saying is that the parents are not involved. The parents are not involved. He is not holding the, the like school districts and other and, uh, and the federal government and other powers that be for this this situation. And let's be honest, the teachings and stuff that these kids are getting in these public schools and stuff is teachings to get these kids to the workforce. We are not spending money to educate kids to do bigger things. We are educating kids enough to get into the workforce. There is plenty of videos online about that. Second Thought has a video about that right now. There are people who have critiqued the system and talked about how kids are failing in the classrooms, are not able to get the learning and being in a learning environment. It is content being made right now with graphics and you don't have any child's voice in the background. You don't see the teacher teaching to the class. You don't see any of that. If anything you will see will be some stock images. So why is this person not able to do the same thing? Because they do not have the range and the only thing that is getting them the attention is the fact that he's talking down to kids and showing it. So him coming out and offering an apology and saying, well, you know, I'm just being honest and I'm just taking the truth and y'all, if y'all are really, really interested, y'all would be doing this, but y'all not interested. This man, I guarantee you, the way he talks and the way he speaks gives me black on black crime, period. If y'all can't understand the dog whistles of anti-blackness that's coming out of his mouth, I don't know why y'all are even talking to begin with because that's what I hear and that's what a lot of other folks are hearing. And educators and black teachers who have been doing this, who I follow, are all condemning this content. This man was being so anti-black in his commentary that you had white teachers jumping into their Freedom Riders bag and talking about how kids are behind. None of them have really dived into why this is happening. It's just, oh, the parents. The parents, yes, there are a lot of parents that are not involved in the, in the learnings of, of, of the students and in their kids for several reasons. Yes, some of the parents may not even be reading on the level or understanding these things because they were in the same system that pushed them into the workplace, the workforce that has them not able to come home and be with their children. Y'all are saying all of this when child care is unaffordable for families of two. Two parent households are not even able to provide child care with, without extra funding. They can't afford it. Even while I'm in the middle of editing this video, there are three articles right now about the U.S. child care crisis. One from Forbes, matter of fact, two from Forbes, and then one from CNN. And they're talking about how it's about to get worse and that people who are working, working full-time jobs cannot afford to provide childcare for their kids. So if this person truly, truly cared, they would be doing all of the research and stuff to explain these things. And I'm not saying he has to come on here and speak in academic terms, explaining the crisis and the things that are going on. But if he was passionate about what is going on and passionate about the kids and these issues, he would be coming just like I am right now, providing information that goes further and talks about the crisis that is keeping these kids from growing, keeping these kids behind. You cannot, we cannot just rely and, and try to put the blame solely on parents when they are victims of the same system that is creating this situation. So we can't sit up here and just talk about the kids not learning and them being behind if we're not talking about the bigger picture. What is his ask? Is he asking other educators to come in or help him do something? What can we do? What can I work on? The only thing that he's offered is an ebook. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Keep supporting me. Um, I do have an ebook coming out soon for parents who want to learn how to bridge that gap for their students at home, for parents who really want more for their child. I do have an ebook coming for y'all soon, so be on the lookout for that. And y'all want me to believe that he ain't no cloud chaser? The only thing that he's offering us is something else to consume, something to purchase so he can make some more money. The same person who's building a platform, because he's not building a platform off his music, his beats in the studio with Nene Leakes and, and Candy. He ain't making no money off of that. His modeling stuff ain't taking off. He is building a platform off of making content like this. And y'all are okay with it because y'all hate kids too.